Hello, my name's Helen. I'm a family support worker. I work for the NHS as part of their continuing care team. Um, and I also do some private um, work as well. Um, the continuing care team is primarily a respite service. Um, we provide 24 hours um, care for um, up to 25 year olds. Um, some of the people we provide care for do have uh, profound and multiple learning difficulties, um, but not all. All of our children are complex medical care, um, but the principles of working in somebody else's home are the same, r regardless of um, the level of care that the child needs. Um, some, some of our children have no cognitive or physical disabilities um, at all. Um, so, um, I'm just going to talk a bit about what it's like working in somebody else's home. Um, so, um, all the principles, boundaries, expectations are the same, um, but sometimes different families have different, um, their expectations are different, that what they want from the service are different. Um, so some some families just want you to be completely professional you're there for medical care and um, to do medications um feeds repositioning um all of that sort of thing monitoring um ventilator care um and all that sort of thing other families they they want to form a bit more of a, a personal bond with you and they like to chat about other things um the, the the other children the you know things that are going off in the family other things um so every every household before we go in has a risk assessment done um to make sure it's safe and the set the working practices are safe and to, and to make sure that the families understand what what it is we are providing um and so once the risk assessments are done, as a service user agreement is um, is written up, which the, the families sign and the um, child's named nurse will sign as well. Um, and that's lays, uh, that sets out the expectations of the family and what the family need to do, what the family need to provide, and um, also the expectations of the staff and the service as a whole. Um, like I said before, different different families have different um expectations um but what what we have to do is respect that this is a family's home it's not a workplace like an office or or a hospital it is a or, or a school or whatever it is a family's home and um they their expectations on their levels of um, what they do, what their cleanliness, how they how they bring up their children, um, how they are as a family, they might not be the same as the expectations that I've got and the things that I I do at my house. Um, so you have to respect that and you know sort of try and adhere to that as much as possible. Um, so um, some 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 families that they'll do your quick handover um when you get there and then they they want to be off doing what they want to do or if it's a night shift they want to go to bed um some some will give you a more in-depth hand, handover um especially if something's happened that day or that you know over the last few days um some then you do a handover and then one just a bit of a bit of a chin wag somebody to talk to you know they may not have seen many other people that day that week um so you know they might just want adult company for a little while um um so yeah so at handover we'll discuss obviously the medications feeds routines anything that's happened the last few days few weeks um if anything's changed um if they've been ill if they've got over an illness um so yeah um so ultimately 
we have to respect that that is that family's home um so obviously leave no mess um put things back where you got them from don't leave any rubbish if you use any pots or anything wash them up um i mean there was there was one family who had not long started having us going in and mum said it's such hard work you coming in I, i'm so tired it's tiring me out and i asked her i said why why is it tying tiring you out she said because i have to clean the house before you come and i said you don't if you don't clean the house every day you don't need to clean the house every day just you know as i mean i've been into some houses that have been filthy but that's how that family choose to live it's not up to me to to say well you need to clean your house before i get here it's it's personal choice and after that after we'd had that discussion she did say she did sort of tone down the cleaning up a little bit and she was a bit more okay i get that i don't have to i don't know if she thought that we were royalty coming in or something and she wanted it to be spotless but yeah she did she did realize that actually i don't need to to clean every corner of the house every time i have somebody coming in and when i think she was getting at that point something like three or four night shifts a week so that was three or four days she was cleaning 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 um so yeah and um quite often what i do is i'll sit back and i'll reflect on how i would feel if i had somebody coming into my house um to look after my children you know when my children were young or my grandchildren um because it is it is different to having somebody in to come and service your boiler or to do a bit of decorating or you know a gardener or or whatever it is different because you've got people coming in over and over and over again and they are looking after your children who um a lot of people find that very difficult because you know you're their parent so you should be able to you should be the one looking after them not somebody else um and if they didn't have the complex needs that they've got um then you would be looking after them themselves so it must be very very difficult to take that step back and allow the people to do that um so um yeah it must it i mean i it it's not something i think that i could do but then if your young person needs somebody with them 24 hours a day it's not something you can physically do do yourself um so yeah so we do some day shifts so it's important to keep your routines medication routines feed routines any physio that needs to do um, personal care so changing pads showering bathing anything else that that needs doing and then after that is when you can do the fun things like playing sensory stories um games um going on outings for walks going to the park um i used to look after a little boy that i you know, used to love taking him to the park close to his house because we go at different times of the year and we'd always like feel different leaves um and there was um there used to be a willow tree that hung over and he used to love to just sit and when there was a breeze he'd sit i'd position him said so it'd just be just in front of his face and he it would go over his hands and he just used to to love that um and we could go to the library you know there's this number of places you can go without needing to spend a lot of money um so the there's also i mean i had a shift once i'd not been doing this job very long and i felt awful because i did this shift with um a girl who um if she didn't want to interact with you she wouldn't um and she would get very vocal and she would pinch and 
she would get quite aggressive if she if she just wanted to be left alone. So this particular day, um, all she wanted to do, she used to have um, a dark tent, one of the dark tents in a room. She wanted to sit in that all day. Um, she didn't want anything in there with her. Anything I tried to pass to her, she threw out. Um, so we did. I did feed her. She did get fed and she did go to the toilet and we went for a walk because around the house she would use a walker. But if we went out for a longer walk, she would go in a wheelchair. She was quite happy to sit in the wheelchair that particular day. So we went for a walk um, and then when I handed over to mum at the end of the day, I apologised. I said, look, I'm so sorry. We've done nothing. We've been for a walk. I've fed her. I've changed her. And that is it because that's all she wanted to do. She just wanted to sit in the tent. And mum was so lovely about it. And she was like, you have done so much. You don't realise how much you've done just by sitting with her. She says, and she started to list off this whole long list of things that she'd managed to do that day. Um, you know, she'd been to the shop, she'd tidied a room, she'd done some cleaning, she'd, I think she'd had coffee with a friend. She'd, she'd listed off this whole list of things and she was like, I couldn't have done a single one of them things without you here. So just because of the fact that she didn't want to do anything today, you've actually done so much. And that was kind of a turning point for me a little bit with this job because I was like, well, actually, yeah, normally I try and do, be doing things, but she let me know she didn't want to do things. And then, um, so that's day shifts, but night shifts um, are slightly different. So you've got a routine to keep to usually. Um, there can be medications, overnight feeds, um, position changes, um, physio, um, all sorts of things like that. So obviously you've got to stick to your routines for the different, you know, for, for that. Um, but then our job then is to promote sleep. So we have to try and, I mean, a, a, a the children that I go to, most of them do sleep um, pretty well. I've got one who doesn't sleep so well, but sometimes it will sleep well. Um, so then because we do wake, wake in night shifts, it's then a case of having things to do to keep yourself awake because I have to stay awake. That I'm, I'm promoting sleep with this child. They've got nothing that needs doing unless there's an emergency there's nothing that needs doing for x number of hours so then i i have things that i, I do um a lot of the night is watching and waiting for something to go wrong hoping that it doesn't but just in case something goes wrong um but then on after that um different people try different things to keep you know to keep myself awake for the shift because you can't be doing um, lots of noisy things because that's not fair on that person that's trying to sleep. So, I mean, I'll read, I'll write. Um, in fact, I've written a couple of the things that I've had published in PMLD Link. They were written on night shifts, um, watch TV um, on a tablet. So you have one, ear, one earphone in so that you've got one ear on the person and one earphone to listen to what you're watching i've done studying um on nights um some people do coloring um games on the ipad knitting crocheting um you know just whatever keeps you awake and then i've got a couple of little silly little routines that i like to do so if i'm feeling tired particularly tired i put hand cream on because just reaching down into my bag to get some hand cream out and put it on, just it's amazing how that wakes you up. Or I'll go and brush my teeth. Um, so, yeah. So when you're working in somebody else's home the way we do, it's a case of being there but not being there so that they don't, that the, the family don't hear you there, they don't see you there, they don't, you don't leave a mark as such, so you're not leaving any mess um 
you're respecting the family's values, um, respecting their choices on how they live, how they bring their children up. But at the same time, you're making a difference because you're allowing that person, that family who, whose um, child with complex medical needs needs 24 hour care. You're allowing them the rest away from them. You're allowing them to go to sleep at night. You're allowing them to go out and do the shopping. You're allowing them to go and do other things and just have some me time. Um, so that's very important that, that families get that chance. Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye.